Many of you have asked me about the recent paper that was published describing the generation of stem cells from human skin. So today we're going to discuss this paper and its implications which I believe are very profound. But in order to understand the meaning of the paper, let us first review the process of differentiation. So the human body develops from one cell, from the fertilized egg. And as it develops, the DNA, different parts of the DNA become silenced. This is why in the adult, the skin in your fingertip, the DNA is the same DNA in the skin of your fingertip as is the DNA in your liver. The only difference why the skin looks like skin and the liver looks like liver is because different parts of the DNA are expressed or generate proteins whereas other parts become silenced. But in the pluripotent state, in the fertilized egg, the DNA is called, it's completely unsilenced. This is what gives it the ability to become every tissue. So the big question is, can one take differentiated DNA, such as the DNA from your skin, and desilence it, and bring it back to the state where it can generate all of the tissues. And this has been done before. It's been done in cloning, cloning by nuclear transfer. So how they clone Dolly the sheep, for example, and how the process of cloning works, is you take uh, the nucleus from a differentiated cell, such as from the skin, and you insert it, you transfer it into an egg where you take out the nucleus of the egg, the original nucleus. And then what happens is the different proteins in the egg, they unwind the differentiated DNA, they, they desilence the different parts, and then the DNA from the skin or from the differentiated cell, then it can become any tissue, and this is how cloning works. Well, what's very exciting about the paper is that this process of de-differentiation was performed with distinct molecules. So, what the authors did is they took human fibroblasts, human skin cells, and they genetically engineered, they, they used viruses, retroviruses, to put the genes for four proteins inside of the cell. Now, the two proteins are uh, called CMIC and KLF4. These two proteins, what they do is they open up the DNA so that the other two proteins, SOX2 and ARC34, these ones can go and make the DNA maintain pluripotency, or in other words, these four proteins uh, hypothesis was that if you put these four proteins inside of the skin cell, the skin cell will become more like an embryonic stem cell. So here's a picture of what the cells look like after you put these four viruses in, I mean these four proteins in with a virus, and then you grow the cells the same way that you would grow embryonic stem cells. And as you can see in the picture here, uh, this looks very similar to what an embryonic stem cell will look like. In order to see if they really are similar to embryonic stem cells, these de-differentiated skin cells, they, the authors of the paper looked for markers, proteins that are found on embryonic stem cells that are associated with only with embryonic stem cell phenotype. So the proteins, as you can see in this picture, this is immunohistochemistry staining, showing expression of um, the SSCA antigens, SSCA3 and 4, also a tumor rejection uh, antigen, uh, uh, TRA1181, and so on. And also in the paper you can see other markers such as NANOG, which are expressed on the de-differentiated skin cells. Now, this is very interesting and exciting, and um, the authors decided to look at the genetic level for other types of markers, such as OCT expression, um, NANOG, telomerase, which as you can see in this figure, on the right-hand side is the RT-PCR, and on the left-hand side is the Western blot. These proteins were also expressed 
again supporting the uh, concept that these cells are like embryonic stem cells. Now, embryonic stem cells, when you grow them in suspension culture or floating culture, they form what's called embryoid bodies, basically clumps of cells that contain a wide variety of tissues. And again, similar to the um, embryonic stem cells, this type of cell, the, um, the cell generated by the de-differentiation process, was able to form embryoid bodies, and the tissue from the embryoid bodies was able to differentiate as you can see in this picture, there is a differentiation into brain tissue, and um, by brain tissue, they specifically induce differentiation into neurons that express dopamine and that express the enzyme that makes dop dopamine, tyrosine hydroxylase, which is the green uh, color um, um, uh, image, the green, the green in the picture, and then. The other uh, lineage that we see is a differentiation into cardiac cells. Here's a picture of a cardiomyocyte in the publication. They actually had a video of this cell beating because they were able to differentiate into um, cardiomyocyte cells. Now in the paper, they also differentiate them into numerous other types of cells, which again suggests that these cells are very similar to embryonic stem cells, the de-differentiated cells. Now another very interesting thing is you know a cell is an embryonic-like stem cell if it forms teratoma. It's a type of tumor that contains numerous tissues. And as you can see in this picture, this is a histology from uh, teratomas that were made by implantation of the cells into immune-compromised mice. And as you can see, there's muscle tissue, uh, adipose tissue, neural tissue, uh, which was formed in the mouse starting from the de-differentiated cell. So in conclusion, this paper is a very, very important paper because it's showing that distinct molecules can be put into an old cell, a differentiated cell, and make it back into a young cell. Now why this is a lot more exciting than simple cloning is because now we understand at a molecular level the mechanisms. And yes, I do realize that the paper used retroviruses to um, achieve this goal so that these cells cannot be used clinically. However, this is the first step. There's numerous small molecules that are known to evoke different parts of the de-differentiation process. So in the future, I think that many small molecules and also many um, in, new proteins will be used in order to develop this finding into something that can be clinically applicable.